Hello everyone, I'm French Monk and welcome back to another video. On August 17th, Tailworlds released the Future Plans developer blog talking about the 1.6.0 update they released shortly beforehand, as well as the over 100 game updates that have been introduced since the start of Bannerlord Early Access in March 2020. Now from Resonant to Jackyfish to Autumn, you may have seen many a YouTuber post videos on this topic. And this is because this specific blog covered some of the issues that the Tailworlds development team themselves have experienced, as well as finally allowing us some more information about what is happening behind the scenes, and more importantly, what we can expect from the studio in the nearby future in regards to Bannerlord. A brief summary of this blog would involve the following information. Most of the employees have received their second vaccine shot, and thus they have started making plans to return to the studio. With the COVID-19 pandemic still raging on, the health of all the people working on this game takes priority, and so they will be taking safety measures to ensure a slow return. Single player wise, we can expect more updates on the battle terrain system, which received positive feedback from the community. And for those who don't remember, it's the system that allows us to, for example, when we stand with an army on top of a bridge, uh, on the campaign map that is, and we fight a battle there, there will actually be a bridge battle, and so on. The Order of Battle feature will allow us to assign troops and heroes to formations, as well as giving them orders and positioning them during the deployment phase for both battles and sieges. Companions you'll pick up along the way can be rewarded and elevated to the status of an ability if we want to. They are also working on banner bearers, more cutscenes ranging from the birth of your child to the death of one of your brother in arms. There's also going to be a sally out mission which would allow defenders to break out of the siege and then some other features and mostly balancing and improving the already existing features of the single player. Multiplayer wise they are working to improve the matchmaking system for both the skirmish and captain game modes. This system we're told will likely be much more stricter than the current match finding systems in place. Me and my regiment members often found ourselves playing against full on clans that were effectively a lot better or had many more hours into the game and this made it not so much fun to play because we kept getting butchered. This new system would in fact match opponents with similar skill levels, so there won't be as much of an unbalanced fight. The developers are also working on a progression system that rewards players for simply playing the game. You would unlock skins for your troops, which you'd be able to customize in the main menu. This would eventually be expanded in more customization systems. Further features include an improved voice chat, allowing us to communicate with others in-game, much like Holdfast did, an MVP system rewarding the best performing player of the round, and an end of the match screen with more detailed summary of each game that you've played, and more importantly, but also later down the line, the release of the custom server files allowing us to host our own multiplayer game servers, and this would possibly be done after the full release of the game. Now for this video there is an important section in the developer blog where they talk about the modding support and how it is their priority to continue supporting these communities by improving and making additions to the current modding tools. Setting up a Steam workshop is set to be planned as well so people will be able to share and download mods easily. In response to this developer blog, several of the modding teams have released another open letter. Now you may remember the first open letter I discussed on the channel, I'll definitely provide you guys a link in the video description and you should also get a notification right here. But uh, yeah, I don't know if they released any more letters since, so I believe for now this is their second one. And I'll be posting the link in the description as well of that open letter, so if you would like to read it for yourself. But uh, if you're not up for reading, I'll happily summarize it for you guys right here. So as mentioned, this open letter is a direct response to the Future Plans developer blog published by Tailworlds. The main grievance and concerns from the modding communities lie with the future modding support for multiplayer mods, and they also feel that Tailworlds has not clarified their plans in this recent blog. Total overhaul mod development teams have been trying to develop mods, and they are really trying their best to work with the tools they have, but state that they cannot make adequate progress and are worried that their work will be unsuccessful on the currently non-existent servers. I've been covering the Sword and Musket project, which is the future revolutionary slash Napoleon Wars mod for Bannerlord, and you can definitely tell that they are having a lot of issues, some mentioned in my more recent update videos. 
Animations, uniforms, weapons, and further accessories that have been made for these specific modules are part of this big concern from the modding communities. The question in this regard is if the custom servers will support these custom assets and how they will perform when introduced. Some aspects can be tested using battle scenes like the custom battle or the sandbox campaign for single player, but other features that are related to server communication can only be created, tested and implemented if custom servers are included, the absence of which causing massive delays. It has to be said though that the modding community is very open towards stale worlds and that it also understands that it is not a triple A studio that can put many people on this aspect of the game. This open letter pretty much indicates some of the concerns they have in light to the development of this game, highlighting that Mountain Blade at its core was always based on very simple mechanics, giving players great amount of freedom in regards to modifying the game, which gave the community in turn a variety of modules, from the Napoleonic Wars, to the American Civil War, to Romans clashing with Gauls, orcs fighting with Gondor soldiers, and White Walkers storming the lands of the North. The fact that there was such a variety of mods made it actually possible for the game and the communities to survive for such a long time before Bannerlord was released, and even now, they are still active. A list of solutions, or suggestions rather, has been added to this letter in regards to how Tailworlds could solve these problems. The create a game function for example, which got released and leaked during the beta and early access process. The modding teams are asking to re-enable this function in the main or perhaps even in the beta branch of the game so that it does not affect the official multiplayer development and actually requires minimal attention and maintenance by Tailworlds themselves. And allowing this function would actually allow players to test features more easily. The modding community would also like to see these server files released for public use as soon as possible. This is of course in contrast with the statement from Tailworlds. They would rather share these files when the game is fully released, and this is where a big part of the frustration lies. An additional segment in the open letter further highlights the importance of custom servers in order to test content from their projects, as well as the introduction of an add-on LAN connection, which allows mod creators to test and experience their work better with their friends. Now this letter was signed by the following modding teams, including Sword and Musket, Full Invasion 3 and Trial of the Seven Kingdoms. Needless to say, there is still a long road ahead and we're just going to exercise a little bit more patience. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and found it informative enough. If you did, make sure to reward it with a like and subscribe for more update videos specifically on the Sword and Musket mod. And I hope to see you in the next video. Take care everyone.